We are here with the head football coach, Normal Community Ironman, Jason Drangwitz, coming off a big 71 to 12 victory over the Danville Vikings. And coach, you had to be pleased with the overall performance of your team on Friday night. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you can you can win a game against a conference rival like Danville, you have a lot of respect for their coaching staff and their players. And do it in such a dominating fashion in all three phases always makes you feel good. Uh, we took care of business early, defensively, offensively, and then special teams, and which allowed us again to to play everybody and get everybody in the second half play a lot, uh, which is always definitely a positive. And then finally, just it continues to keep all our goals in place of being in contention to win a Big 12 title. Uh, and it was exciting because we qualified. We officially qualified for the playoffs with our with our sixth victory, which is always a big deal. And being 28 or 29 years in a row is pretty special and something we're excited about. We try to tell our kids not to take for granted. So good night for Ironman football. Had a great crowd. Kids, kids played well, and now it's on to the next one. I guess when you talk about 28 or 29 year a streak of playoffs. Consistency is the term. Talk about the consistency of the program, coaching players, and maybe the, the continuity that has come through things over the years. Well, I think there's been tremendous consistency in, and not just Ironman football and Ironman athletics and Ironman mm -hmm. extracurriculars, whether it's the band or the theater or the chorus or the court singers. Everybody. It's just consistently been excellent in all those phases. But if you go back to Friday, we're honoring the 1974 team, their 50th anniversary, their estate runner-up and really uh, normal community army football has been consistently good and that's a direct result of uh, outstanding coaches, you know, Coach Tharp, Coach McIntyre, Coach Venerable, Coach Temples, great assistant coaches, talented players, great families, all have stuff to say in that and anytime you can have that continued success over multiple years is really impressive but it just goes to to the consistent way I think we've probably done here for all those years uh, from the head coach to the assistant coaches to our players and families. It's really a credit to all those people that are involved uh, in Ironman football and I just feel lucky to be, you know, uh, uh, get to be a part of it or a small piece and then continuing that success. Talk about the 1974 team, what that was like on Friday night, not just now to look at a banner on a wall, but the people who were a part of that, the stories that were part of that. Talk about that experience. Sure. So Kurt Swearingen and I started planning this last year and when we started thinking about uh, it was going to be 50 years since that team. And uh, it's just been a process between me, him, Bruce Evans, Nick Kerfoot, mm -hmm. all these different guys talking together and them telling me stories about when they played. Um, and then it kind of all came to fruition on Friday, Thursday night, four of uh, the players from the 74 team came to our practice, spoke to the team and had team dinner with us, which is really cool. Uh, they had their tent in the end zone, they came out for the coin toss, we got to take a picture uh, with the coach, me, our captains and the guys that were out for there for the coin toss. It's just a really neat experience and connecting our players to the past and understanding that Ironman football and Ironman athletics, it's about more than us. It's about people that have came before us and trying to keep those connections uh, strong so they know uh, uh, they're responsible for really something really special, whether it's Ironman football, Ironman basketball, baseball, whatever. We've been really blessed here since I've been here to be successful volleyball, soccer. <laughs> you go down the line, track, cross country, just been really fortunate and blessed that we've just had a consistent, successful programs for all these years. Even though, uh, obviously, the point margin was pretty significant on Friday night, Danville did test your secondary early in the game with some long, deep throws that certainly probably made them look at some things and, and maybe some things to correct there early in the contest. Yeah, I mean, they, they put it on us early in the passing game, and, and that's something that at times we've struggled with throughout the year and until we prove that we can be more consistent in defending the pass and uh, better with our technique and eyes. I think that's something we're going to continue to see. Credit to our kids, though, that after some early early struggles, a couple plays, mm -hmm. really, right. uh, we kind of locked that down and got interceptions and made plays and didn't let guys get loose. We just got to continue to, to get better because uh, as we progress this week, Centennial's quarterback is a three-year starter, very good thrower with some good, with really good receivers. So I'm sure the ball is going to be in the air. And, uh, down the line, we're probably going to see a lot of quarterbacks that can control the football. So Danville did a good job. Uh, we weren't really uh, sound early, but I feel like we got better and didn't allow those couple early plays to impact how we played the rest of the game. Seemed like, could, seemed like this game flipped almost on one play. Jace Wilson gets that interception, and that really 
tilted the contest in your favor at that point in the first quarter. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we score, they score. Um, but again, I also felt like after their score, offensively, we respond to one mm -hmm. right down the field and scored again. Then we get a pick, we score again, then we get a pick six, then another pick six. And so that was kind of the game in a nutshell. And Danville was, that was shorthanded. They were missing a couple guys um, uh, that weren't there. But credit to our kids that we were able to take care of business and kind of uh, dominate the game eventually in all three phases and, and, and put it away fairly early. Yeah, Friday's victory over Danville marked the 699th victory in program history. How does it feel being on the cusp of such a historic milestone, just one win away from 700? Well, first I'd want to know where do you get that number from? IHSA. IHSA has us at 699. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I have us at 688. So we're almost <laughs> close to 700 wins. Okay. Um, Let's go with the IHSA. I'll take the IHSA. We'll take the IHSA number. I think, Zach, it just kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. I mean, it's just, I don't know what the right word, it's very humbling to know that you're a part of a program that has been so historically successful and be just one of many coaches that have had their impact on a small part of the, those group of wins um, and just feel blessed that we've been so good, so good, we've been so successful for so long. It's just a credit to uh, all the coaches that have come before us and are with us now, all the players we've had, all the families that help make it work. It's uh, We think Ironman football is a special place along with Ironman athletics in general and to reach those milestones and be a part of it is pretty humbling but also pretty pretty cool experience and one we definitely don't want to take for granted and are very, very uh, proud of. Yeah, the upcoming 700, 700th win won't just have an impact on your current players, as you talked about, but even guys that played for the Iron 50 years ago, as you just honored that 74 team. What does it mean to Ironman football and the community that it's built? I, I think Ironman football provides a tremendous source of pride for a lot of people, either people that have played here, coached here, in the community that has supported us for a really, really long time. And again, it just is a credit to all those people that have come before us that we've been able to be successful. And I think a lot of the expectations and standards that are set throughout the years have remained fairly cons fairly consistent. Uh, again, it's just, it's humbling and awe-inspiring to be a part of something like that. And it's hopefully something that's gonna continue on uh, you know, long after I'm gone and these current players have left and it becomes our job and our responsibility to make sure our players and coaching staff understand that we've been successful here long before them and it's a tremendous responsibility to try to continue to uphold that level of success of winning football games, doing things the right way, making the playoffs, winning conference titles and it requires a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication uh, in the dark that most people don't see for us to to be that successful and uh, hopefully we got a few more uh, victories in us this year to add to that total. Yeah, you talked about hoping to have a few more victories. This week you play Centennial. The Chargers are coming off of a pretty brutal defeat. What things can the Ironmen hone in on to take the Chargers down this week? Well, I think when you talk about Centennial one, it's going to be. I, I believe it's their last home game, so it could. It's probably. It could be or probably a senior night. So they're, they're going to have that added dimension of motivation to play us. Uh, number two, they're fighting for their playoff lives, uh, not fighting for their lives, but they want to be playoff eligible, and these games matter. So that adds an extra thing. Uh, I'm assuming they would be excited to play us, a team that's in the front of the conference that provides motivation, and they want to kind of get back on the right track after. Uh, a loss they probably weren't super happy about um, uh, last week. H however, you know, Lincoln Way West is an extremely talented team. They were in the quarterfinals in 7A last year. They returned a lot of guys they might arguably play in one of the best 7A conferences in the state. So, um, uh, you know, we, we, we have a big challenge ahead of us. We got to practice the right way and we got to be able to understand that they're playing for a lot. Just like we're playing for a lot, they're playing for a lot as well. Coach, then, as you kind of look at your schedule, Peoria obviously looming in week number nine, how do you keep your players focused on week eight and not looking ahead to week nine where it's not just Peoria, but it's also possibly the conference championship night? I think the way we do, hopefully we've 
set the expectation and the standard of is this is how we always prepare. It's all about Champagne Centennial. It's all about putting our best foot forward and continuing to improve. Our weekly our weekly approach uh, doesn't have anything to do with Peoria Pure, Pure High. Everything was about Centennial. Everything was about making corrections from the mistakes we made against Danville and then putting in the best game plan we can possibly have for Centennial. It has nothing to do with Peoria High. We don't talk about Peoria High. We'll worry about uh, them on Saturday if, when we bring the guys in on Monday. I just like to think hopefully we've set that expectation over the last six and seven years that it's one week at a time uh, that we're not worried about that. Now, do our players probably think about that? Yes. Um, but I know as a coaching staff, our messaging has not, is everything about Centennial, nothing to do with them. And, and we don't really try to look forward um, to that out of respect for uh, the coaching staff and the players at Centennial who do a lot of the things and they do them really, really well that we have to be prepared for. So coach, what do you want to see from your team on Friday night? Uh, one, I want to see us, uh, you know, have a great week of practice. I thought last week we had a really good week of practice and hopefully we can continue that stack multiple days. Uh, it's always a challenge when you change your routine to go on the road. We want to see us locked in and focused and, and dialed into what we got to do. Offensively, uh, we got to continue to be explosive in the run game and the pass game and get our guys in space. Defensively, I want to see us clean up some things in the back end and defending the pass because I know they're going to present some challenges to us. And then finally, we have to win the special teams game, which I think we've done the last three games. We got to cover kicks. We got to execute extra point and punts and hopefully play with a great sense of energy that the message this week was about winning and leadership has a price and you have to pay that price every day at practice, every rep, every snap, and it's not easy to do. So hopefully, uh, We'll do those things as we head over to Champaign. And Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck on Friday. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you guys very much.